What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today, today I'm very mad. I'm very mad, I'm very upset, and I'm very annoyed. Why am I very mad, very upset, and very annoyed? Well, I'm really kind of mad at myself for the fact that I love this pen. I really was not expecting to love it. For a couple of reasons. One, I've had other sailor pens before. I've, you know, got my Pro Gear. I've been using uh, a Pro Gear Slim that I've done reviews on before. Uh, and I very much enjoy those pens. But I'm not like absolutely gobsmacked, you know, balls to the wall. Like this is absolutely stunning. Love it, you know? But I also didn't think I would like it because it's a big pen. I mean, you can see by the title. It is a sailor king of pens. It's supposed to be a really big pen, and it is a big pen, but it's not as big as I was expecting. And I love it. <laughs> and I'm mad that I love it because it is not cheap, y'all. It is not cheap at all. I'll put a few prices down here for you guys in some different currencies because wowie, wowie, wowie. <laughs> Yeah. So before we get further into that, let me just, you know, talk about the parts of the pen. Let me come a little closer. So the pen itself is a, you know, flat topped pen. It pretty much has the same body as the Sailor Pro Gear Slim and the Sailor Pro Gear. And this is the Sailor Pro Gear King of Pens. So it's just bigger. Uh, so still flat top. It's pretty bulky in the middle uh, and does taper towards both ends. Uh, you do have the Sailor logo at the top, of course, uh, a nice silver trim clip that has a very nice spring to it, uh, a chunky, beefy middle ring here uh, that, of course, says, like, everything Sailor. Uh, Sailor Japan, founded 1911, tapers down, and you do have a little silver trim ring here. This is obviously the demonstrator version, so uh, you can see clearly through it. Uh, one of my favorite things about this pen, which I don't even really ever talk about in most um, fountain pen reviews, but one of the things I like most is actually this cap here. So the inner portion of the cap, you can see this little, I guess, stick knob thing here. That compresses so that when you put the pen in all the way, it creates a very nice seal. So watch how this space gets shorter. Pretty cool, huh? So it creates a really nice seal um, to lock in all the moisture <laughs> uh, so that you can use it for a while with no issues. Uh, you do have a bit of a beefy grip section, um, but not as beefy as I was expecting. And then the whole body unscrews. Uh, this is a gigantor metal sleeve on the inside here. Um, that slowly tapers down to be the diameter of the converter. This is their regular converter that Sailor always uses. It is proprietary, but it's the regular one. Um, Emmy has put a special one in here with a red knob. If you were to order it on your own, it would have a black knob, uh, but he likes some fancy things, so you can't really blame him. Um, but because of this, you cannot eyedropper convert. Uh, plus the back of the barrel is not like sealed anyways. Uh, but the barrel is just a barrel. <laughs> um, so this is very, very cool. Uh, it fits very nicely in my hand. Uh, it's got a nice weight. It's not super heavy because it is a very plastic pen, but the addition of the metal here um, is really, really nice because then it makes it sit in your hand very, very nicely. And it adds just a nice kiss of weight uh, without it being overburdened. Uh, you can post if you wish. It's just push to post. Uh, but because the, you know, metal clip and the metal ring here, it does add a little bit of bulk for me. Uh, and it does kind of back weight it a little bit. But if you've got bigger hands, you may or may not want to use it posted. I think it's perfectly uh, suited to use unposted, but it's your call. The threads here, which you can barely even see, are 
very, very shallow. Uh, so no matter where you hold, uh, it feels really, really nice. Uh, the grip section is a little short, but like I said, everything here feels really great. And then you got a mondo of a nib. Like, look at the size of that bad boy. He big. I mean, that's my thumb. <laughs> Guys, it, it, it's nuts. Uh, this one is a broad nib. It is a 21 karat gold nib and has the sailor motif smack dab in the middle. I showed in a video about my favorite pens that I posted a few days ago. Uh, the Benu Briolette. This is a number five size nib. Just a little comparison there. Yep. That's a big nib. <laughs> that is a big nib. Um, if I get out the Jinhao X159 with a number eight size nib, you can see that it's pretty much the same size. It's actually slightly, slightly bigger. So it is a very large nib. Uh, and in fact, if you've ever used the Sailor Jinhao X159, the X159, not the regular one, but the X159, uh, you'll be very familiar with this kind of style grip section uh, because they're very, very, very close together. Um, so I did a full review of this uh, over the holiday season last year. Um, I believe I labeled it the most important fountain pen you'd ever buy. And I stand by that still. And it applies to here. In this video, I was talking about the comparison to the Mont Blanc 149. Now that I have this in my hand, I still stand by my opinion in here. Uh, but you could also compare it then to the Sailor King of Pen. This is slightly less weight than this. Uh, so you don't get the weight comparison, but the general size, yeah, I would still say is a, is a good deal. Um, and that's part of the reason why I wasn't expecting to like this pen as much because with the 149, uh, it's a bit beefy in the X, sorry, the, <laughs> the X159 is a bit beefy for the grip section. Um, and it is something that I eventually did get used to, but what where this shines where this well this does this does shine this is a really great writer but this is a better writer <laughs> and i mean i would kind of expect that because dang um but this is a really 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 great writer um much better than i was expecting i will say that it is a broad nib um, I am not a personal fan of broad nibs. This is Emmy from Pen Ventures. Check out the description. You'll find his uh, link to the website. Uh, you'll also find my link to my Patreon if you want to help support me in what I do here. Um, this is Emmy's personal pen, so it's his choice to have a broad. I personally would probably downgrade it to a medium um, if I were to buy this pen myself. Uh, would I buy my would I buy this pen myself? That is the ultimate question. Uh, and the answer is yes and no. <laughs> the answer is I would not buy the demonstrator version. While I like some pens that are like demonstrator-ish, uh, like the Visconti here uh, that has you know little bits that you can see through, uh, I'm not a huge fan of purely demonstrator. Um, so I would want to get one of the colored versions, uh, be that one of the like, you know, special edition ones or, or not, who knows. Um, so would I buy this one in particular? No, but would I buy a Sailor King of Pens? Yes. However, it would take me a very long time to be able to afford one. So I would have to save up for a very long time. Um, but do I think it's worth it for me? Eventually, yeah, I think so. Um, my all-time goal is to have my entire pen collection under 10 fountain pens. Uh, and I think eventually, eventually, this would be one of 10 for me. But I need to show you how it all writes. Oh boy. All right, before I forget, the ink for today is 
That was not the fault of the pen, that was my rotation. Sailor Magno Fuji. Great shading ink. This thing shades like nobody else's business, <laughs> which is why I put it in this pen. Not only because it's a sailor and a sailor, um, but because I knew that this is a very nice wet fountain pen. Now, Emmy did say uh, that he did modify this slightly to write a little wetter than it came. Um, so keep that in mind that if you order this yourself uh, and you're not ordering it from somebody who can tune a nib before it gets to you, uh, it may be a little bit drier than what you see here. Uh, but like I said, this is a broad nib. It is a very broad nib. Uh, for reverse, you can definitely get some goodness out of it. I wouldn't recommend it for really any pen to do that. No pen is meant to be reverse written, but if you need to squeak a word or two out, you totally can. Uh, and it actually writes pretty smooth. Not as smooth as like, you know, the forward facing way. This basically feels like butter with the just slightest touch, slightest touch of feedback, um, just enough to ground the nib to the paper uh, so that you know that you've made contact. But it's just so nice. And I was not expecting this. Check this out. Regular line. Pressed. Regular. Pressure. Regular. Pressure. Now, you can probably squeak out a little bit more than that, but it's, like I said, it's not my pen, so I'm not doing it. But it does have a really good responsiveness. Now, this is not a flex pen, so do not flex it. But what this allows is while you're writing, I really need to stop rotating, <laughs> while you're writing, that's why it didn't show up here. I've never had any hard starts or skips with this. Um... But I do notice that when I rotate the nib a little bit, uh, it does have that. But if you hold it like the way that you're supposed to and not looking through a lens, then it's good to go. Um, wh while you're writing, it has like a, a bouncy effect, sort of like a, a shock absorber on a car uh, where it really does respond to your pressure uh, and it, it, it ebbs and flows with you, uh, which is really, really phenomenal. Um, and I just was not expecting the nib to write like this because the other sailors I've used, the nibs are much stiffer uh, and I just wasn't expecting it. Um, I guess the, the closest I can, I can think is sort of like all of the Pelican pens with the exception of the M1000. Now I've only used the M1000 like to write a single sentence um, from somebody at a pen show, so I don't have too much experience with it. But from what I remember, uh, it had a very much similar response like that. Uh, whereas every other Pelican pen is very stiff writer. So who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe that's an expectation out of Sailor and Pelican. Uh, the Mont Blanc 149 though. That's definitely a stiff writer. Um, but guys, this pen is awesome. It really is. Uh, would I recommend that you purchase one? If you have the funds, absolutely. Uh, would I recommend that you put yourself into debt for one? No, I wouldn't recommend that you put yourself into debt for any fountain pen. Um, but if you have the means, definitely, definitely do it. Um, and if you have the means to try one out, oh my goodness, do not hesitate. Hop in the car and go to wherever you can try it out ASAP. <laughs> um, but guys, I appreciate you very much for watching uh, and supporting me and supporting Emmy. Uh, this is a great collaboration. So Emmy, again, thank you for sending this to me. I will be sending it back very shortly. Uh, if you like this video, do hit that like button. New videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional Tuesday. Uh, like I said before, check out the description for a link to Emmy's channel um, and his website, as well as my link to my Patreon account if you want to help support me and what I do here. But regardless, as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Big shout out to all my Patreon members. Uh, let me know if you prefer this quick version or the older version where I went through one by one. But 
I appreciate all of you so, so much.